Okay, we're now going to look at something in physics called the resultant force. Now the first thing I want you to think of when you hear resultant force is to think about the overall force acting upon an object. Okay, so resultant force is essentially the overall force. So imagine that I've got an object right here. Let's say this is a big rock. If I've got one person pushing the rock from this way, we've got a force acting in this direction. If I've got someone else the other side pushing the rock the other way, I've also got a force acting in the other direction. Now let's say this person here is much, much stronger than this person here. This person will be applying more force. So this person, let's say, could be applying 400 newtons. Remember, newtons is the unit for force. Whereas this person here is applying a force of 200 newtons, less force. So what is the overall force going to act on this object? if we've got two different forces acting in the opposite directions. Well, this object is going to move this way because that is the, um, the forces aren't balanced and it's going to be an overall force of 200 newtons. How did I get that? Well, it's 400 newtons this way, but then I need to subtract 200 newtons, which was the other way. So this gives us a resultant force of 200 newtons in that direction. Notice how my resultant force has a direction. Okay, next up, another example. Now let's imagine that uh, we've got the same situation, but this time, this time, um, the person in purple this person has gone to the gym. They've got a lot stronger. So this time, we've got the same situation. They're both pushing in the opposite directions. But this time, they're both applying a force of 400 newtons. What's the resultant force? Well, because those forces are acting in the opposite direction, the resultant force is actually zero because the two forces are balanced. So there's no overall resultant force in either direction. Okay, next example. What we have now is the same situation, but now both of the characters have decided to push the rock from the same side. So now they're both applying a force in the same direction. So what is the resultant force going to be? Now, because the force is applied in the same direction, instead of taking one away from the other, we're going to add them together because both forces are in the same direction. So this time, the resultant force is 400 plus 400, remember newtons, which equals a resultant force of 800 newtons. But I haven't quite finished because my resultant force is 800 newtons in that direction. Now, one more example I'd like to put. So let's say that I have this object here. Now, sometimes, uh, yeah, well, I've just got this object here. Let's say these are the forces acting upon it. We've got a force of 200 newtons in that direction, 400 newtons in that direction, but this time we're going to think about the forces in these two directions as well. So let's say that's 50 newtons up and 50 newtons down. How do we calculate this resultant force? So, first of all, we're going to look at the resultant force in this plane here. So vertically, as we can see, because we've got 50 newtons in either direction, these forces are balanced, so the object will not move in either direction. There will be no resultant force in either direction. Whereas, because these are not balanced here, we have a greater force on this side than this side. So to find the resultant force here, we do 400 take away 200, which equals 200 newtons. So there's going to be a force of 200 newtons that way, in this direction. 
So, key things to remember, resultant force means overall force. If the forces are in the opposite direction, we take one away from the other. If they're in the same direction, we add them together. And if they are balanced, so the same in either direction, they cancel each other out. And that's it. Thank you.